God. I live equal shares to my estate. Do with it what you will. Oh. Oh. We have no money. We're not vintners, for God's sake. Have it! Oh, God, it's French. We all need dreams, Louis. It's a fresh start. My name is Rebecca Gibney and I play Daisy Munro in Under the Vines. I don't know if many people remember a show called Northern Exposure that was around many years ago. Uh, that's a show that I always loved because it was about fish out of water characters going to this kind of kooky town and falling in love with the characters and falling in love with the place and learning how to fit in. And that's kind of what this show is. Daisy is a Sydney socialite. She's a very gregarious, very kind, very generous, open-hearted person, but she's also a bit flaky and, dare I say, a little bit shallow. To start with, anyway. <laughs> this looks lovely. Thanks, David. <laughs> Daisy, mm -hmm. he's too young. Well, we're not planning on getting married, Fee. Oh, oh mwah, darling. Mwah. What a beautiful night. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm so glad you're both here. I thank you and the pangolins thank you. Oh, I'm sure they do. Now for the healing part of the night. Mm -hmm. How are you able to help? Mm. Put me down for 3,000. <gasps> you really are too good. And Daisy? Same. Oh, wonderful. You are both wonderful. Daisy has spent the majority of her adult life being supported by Stanley Oakley, who's her stepfather. And she's at a party one night when her credit card's declined and then she gets a text to say that Stanley's died, um, which is devastating. But she also then learns that she's inherited a vineyard in the South Island of New Zealand. She assumes she's going to arrive in New Zealand and it's going to be like under the Tuscan sun. You know, she's got all her dresses ready, she's going to go there, she's either going to fall in love with the place or she's going to sell it, one of the two. And nothing is what she thinks is going to happen. Nothing ever does happen like that. A soul heir. Ah, uh, heiress, actually. Of a vineyard in New Zealand. Hmm. And do you know, Vanessa, my psychic, she told me last week that I was a vintner in a past life. Can you believe that? I really can't. Well, this will be me sunning myself under the vines. You know, I think they have glaciers down there. Oh. Oh, well, I'll pack a pashmina. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm only going for a couple of days, really, just to get the lay of the land. Mm. Maybe even get a lay on the land. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy arrives in New Zealand and despite thinking that she's the sole heir to the vineyard, she discovers that there are two sole heirs. So they're not sole heirs at all. Um, and she has to share the vineyard with a pompous git from the UK <laughs> called Louis Oakley, who happens to be Stanley's nephew. My name is Charles Edwards. I play Louis Oakley in Under the Vines. Louis, he lives in London with his wife and his young son. And he has an uncle called Stanley, who he doesn't know terribly well. He probably knew him better when he was a little boy, um, who dies. And he receives a notification of this saying that you've inherited your uncle's vineyard in New Zealand. So Louis gets on the plane, thinking it's going to be a short trip. Louis and Daisy first encounter each other at the airport. You know, he's a, he's a man travelling alone, even though he has a, ma a, a wife and child at home. Um, and, yeah, I think under different circumstances, um, they might hit it off in another world. But uh, they're both arriving unbeknownst to each other, of course, that they are, they're both arriving with the same purpose in mind, which is to inherit the vineyard. And things get a little more complicated. <laughs> so you're Vic? N no, Louis. You're not the lawyer? No, Vic, the lawyer, is currently taking a slash. Well, that's lawyers for you, isn't it? They're either on the piss, taking the piss, or pissing you off. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm a lawyer. Stanley had two lawyers. No. I'm oh, sorry. I'm... Who are you? Louis Oakley. I'm, oh. I'm Stanley's nephew. But who are you? Oh well, I'm I'm Daisy Monroe, stepdaughter, and now it seems vintner and sole heir to Stanley's vineyard. Um. Oh. Daisy Munro, meet Louis Oakley. Yes, yes, thanks, Vic, we've met. Um, I, I wonder if you wouldn't mind explaining uh, just what the bloody hell's going on here. Mm. Uh, those details probably best discussed in my office. Oh. Office. <clears throat> Behold the... District of Peak View. When Erin, our creator, first came through central Otago to look for the right vineyard, she stumbled across Blackridge, which is what we're using as Oakley set in this kind of rocky, 
outcrop area with jagged ridges, but then you've got mountains in the background, and then this beautiful small boutique vineyard with this amazing kind of 70s or 80s house. So it was the perfect location for that, and every day, we have a different vista. We've been here through summer and now heading into autumn, so we've been here when the, the leaves were at green as green can be and now they're golden and orange. It's just been, a, it's incredibly visually spectacular and I think that's another thing about this show, that the landscape plays such a huge part. It's a character in the piece, really. I think Under the Vines being set here is, it, it, you couldn't have it anywhere else. The landscape has an enormous effect on the story and the heart of the show and on the characters. It's, uh, I mean, the camera dwells lovingly, quite rightly, on the landscape. It's a wonderful place for these two people to meet and to, to have this experience and, and with this such a, a stunning backdrop. And for us as a, as, a, as a cast and crew working here, it's been an absolute delight. And it, you know, you wake up every day and you just come to work full of joy. What I love about the South Island of New Zealand is there's no place in the world like it. The Deep South uh, is just a place unto itself, apart from the stunning visual grandeur. I mean, it really is spectacular with the remarkable mountains with, you know, central in general is, is stunning. I think Louis undergoes quite a profound change whilst he's at Oakley. You know, the beauty and the, the, the staggering kind of expanse of the landscape has, a, has quite a deep effect on him. Even though he mentions as a child he used to hate the countryside uh, and he's very much a city guy, I think he encounters something here that touches him that hasn't before. And I think that's to do with the landscape and the simple generosity of people that he meets, which he just, you know, it just doesn't, he doesn't encounter in his daily life because he's such a, you know, his life is so full of, of you know, offices and, and um, you know, where his job takes him. He hasn't had time to step back and actually see where he would fit better. And I think he might find it here. Oakley Vineyard is set in the fictional town of Peakview um, and obviously like any amazing fabulous town in any amazing fabulous rom-com, it's full of colourful amazing characters. <laughs> about this? They'd run down the outside, you sneaky dog. Well, you know. Oh! <laughs> oh. 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 They have signed, haven't they, Vic? We have assembled an extraordinary cast of New Zealand actors for this show. I mean, it's, it's really quite astonishing how many of them have agreed to come along. It's very impressive. The scripts are so original and witty and, and so heartfelt. And it is an ensemble cast. Yes, Louis and Daisy are following their story, but, you know, it wouldn't be anything without the, everybody else. And, you know, there's however many of, of us there are, but you want to know all their stories, and because they're all played so beautifully and they're written so beautifully. Right. Uh, thanks for coming. Now, we're still getting our heads around this place, obviously, the lay of the land, so to speak. So, um, Gus, what is it that you do at Oakley Wines? I work the vineyard. Right, and, and, and that consists of? It's different stuff. This place would fall apart without gas. Or perhaps, to be more precise, would, uh, would fall apart more. Uh, Tippy, what's your job description? I help Gus. When we get to the vineyard, we have Tippy and Gus. Tippy is the winemaker, uh, a young Māori woman from the North Island. We've got a fairly new actress in, in the role, Trey, who's just phenomenal. She's kind of this very straight shooting, shy, Slightly tough, but not really, um, character who, again, you know, she softens towards Daisy and Louie and vice versa. So, where, where did you learn? My grandfather was a winemaker up north. Oh. Uh, when I came down here, I was labouring. Stan had just stumbled into town by accident, bought this place. Mm. He had no idea what he was doing, so he asked me to help out. And then we have Gus, who is this beautiful, innocent, he's kind of the farmhand, but he's also a philosopher. He comes up with the most extraordinary statements that, that you, you could almost go, what is he saying? But they're very truthful and honest and beautiful. I'm going to say something. Tippy is the best thing this place is going for it. She knows about wine, something you'd see if you opened your eyes. 
Because if you open your eyes, you see things that you don't see when your eyes are closed. They're the main people on the vineyard. Griff is Daisy's best friend and I have a couple of Griffs in my life. He's a well-known actor in Australia and he's gay. Um, but as is the case with the industry still, unfortunately, um, he's not out because he thinks it's going to affect his career. Um, and that, but he's the most generous, kind, loving, funny person in her life and she absolutely adores him. Why are they so loud? They're Australian. Everyone, everyone, everyone. This is Griffin Galway, my friend and co-conspirator. No, I just call me Griffin. This is Louis uh, and uh -huh. uh, and Gas and Tippy. Tippy, like a, like Tipsy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah, it was a good one. So, so you're you're the actor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, again, he goes through a journey over the course of this series, which is fantastic. He needs to get away from his life to get here to also evolve to realise what's important. And also, I think times are changing, so hopefully that's what this series will reflect as well, that people don't make judgments based on your sexuality or, you know, what you wear. Spruce the place up a bit and put on the open market. I mean, I've dabbled in real estate, I've got a licence. Daisy, for heaven's sake! Don't you yell at me! I'm sorry. I apologise. But you have got to burst this bubble that you live in, Daisy. We, 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 we have no money. This place could sit on the market for years. When we're, we're not vintners, for God's sake, we're... What? What are we, Louis, seeing as you seem to have all the answers? I think the progression of Louis and Daisy's relationship through the series, the, as I've said, it starts out uh, rather... He's very irritated by her, and but I think he starts to admire her. I think he admires her tenacity and her generosity of spirit and the way she is determined to make something of this ramshackle place. You will always hold a unique place in our hearts. No, stop, 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 stop. I can't, I, I can't do this. I'm not selling. I beg your pardon? No, listen. Tippy, when I tasted your wine, I was transported. I, I was made to remember things, feel things, want things. I didn't know wine could do that. The world needs your wine, Tippy. And you, Gus, you, you, you love Stan's place. You belong there. And me, well, I, I, I have... You've got vision. You just haven't seen it yet. Oh, thank you, Gus. Yes, I do, I have vision. I'm not getting on that plane. Have you completely lost your mind? No, I'm, I'm staying. He kind of likes that, he admires it. And even though he has some very firm ideas at the beginning about what should be done with it, i.e. sold and got rid of as quickly as possible, she pulls a trick on him which I won't reveal and um, he realises that actually she might have a point. Let's at least give it a go. He knows that his life back home is, is on hold or at least needs work, so he takes it as an opportunity to, to go, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll take your lead. And he does, and, and they, they get on reasonably well. It's time for me to sell my old life to pay for our new one. Oh, but Oakley is a solid investment with award-winning wines and our own personal style. Well, we, we scrub up pretty well, don't we? Hmm. We start the series with Daisy wanting a facelift because I think she thinks that that's the only way she's going to keep men interested and that's her life, is maintaining her physicality and her looks. And I think once she gets into Oakley and, and learns about the people and, and really settles in and actually starts doing a hard day's work, she realises it's not about this. And life doesn't end when you get to your midlife. If anything, it can begin again. I think primarily what audiences will love about this show is its heart. And um, at this time in our lives, you know, with all that's going on in the world, it's, we're in a COVID-free story here, which is, is nice. It's about relationships and it's about trust and love and longevity and, and death and um, honour, all those things are in it. It's a very human story and I think that's what audiences will really enjoy. The most remarkable thing is the Milky Way. Just look at it. Mm. Stretching out across the southern sky. 
in all its glory. <laughs> all those stars, mm -hmm. other worlds. Kind of humbling when you think about it. You know, I have to say, Daisy, you rather humbled me today. Uh, I mean, you, you sold your life. No, I didn't. I just traded it in on a new one. Mm. Like any fabulous romantic comedy, um, there's always those people, you know, they're the two that they love to hate each other. Everyone, we know it from classic Hollywood films to When Harry Met Sally to all of, the, you know, the classic rom-coms. They hate each other, they love each other, they hate each other. And, and I think over the course of this series, Daisy comes to learn that he's actually not a pompous git. He's, he's got serious problems, but he's kind and he's pretty dashing. He's very handsome, he's very thoughtful. And I think he goes from thinking that she's you know, just a vacuous flake, which she admittedly does present as one, to realising that she does have more depth than a puddle. And, um, and he starts to grow fond of her as well. But obviously things are always going to happen to keep them apart. So whether they get together or not, you just have to watch the series.